All right, hey guys, so we should be seeing the live stream pop up here any second if you guys aren't already seeing it. So I'm just gonna give uh, just, just a second. I'm just watching the stream to make sure it looks like it's working. Yep, I think we're good. Hope everyone's having a good night and a good week. Uh, appreciate everybody's patience with me tonight. I was running a little late, uh, helping out some other guys after my previous meeting with uh, Shading and Lighting One group, but we're all good. So uh, this is actually going to be a kind of a, a simple live session, I think, compared to the other ones, and I'll show you why. So this week. Um, you know, after 4.1, which is just some PBR materials in Unity, um, the live session is really fairly straightforward. It's you guys just going in there, you're gonna be adding a couple materials uh, to the project you've already been working on, doing some uh, what's called subsurface scattering. We're gonna get some candle wax working. Uh, we'll talk about emissions, get some uh, the flames working on the candles. And I don't think this activity is honestly really difficult. I think out of all the ones you've done this month, this is probably one of the simpler ones. So it's not too hard. And because it's a fairly light one, uh, the key, I think, is I really want you guys to use some of the extra time this week uh, to you know, get caught up, uh, go back and look at critiques. I'm sure there's a lot of like small things that all of you have kind of wanted to address or fix, like whether it's um, small tweaks with uh, one texture that's been bothering you, or maybe there's a bunch of materials that just don't quite feel right, or you're still working on the lighting, or something broke in the project. There's probably a lot of small things that have kind of built up over the month, and I really want you to use this last uh, half of the week just to go back, look at critiques, um, see what you can do, uh, and then you know do the best that you can on getting that all wrapped up uh, at the end of the week. So uh, I'll kind of just run you through the slides real quick. Um, it looks like a lot of steps, but this is actually very easy. We're going to run through pretty much all of this uh, in the live session. You're going to see it's not really too bad. Um, uh, this is in 4.3, by the way. So we're basically going to be going through um, some different things in Maya. Eventually, we're going to produce our final render. This is obviously after you're you know, completely done and happy with everything. And then, like we do at the end of every month, um, once we get through all this stuff and you guys kind of decide what type of stones and things you want to do and uh, you fix all this, uh, you're just producing your final image, presenting it, and then you can kind of show it off in your little video and just basically talk about um, what you learned. Uh, if you guys want to do it as like a slideshow, that's cool. If you want to do it as a regular OBS recording, that's fine. Um, even if you guys have issues where your you know, OBS isn't working properly, if you want to do it as like... Um, a written format as like a temporary fix and do like a, just like a, uh, a presentation that way. I'm open to that as well. Uh, but most people end up doing the OBS recording. We're, we're talking like three to five minutes and you're basically going to be showing off your adjustments with this project, like the stuff this week in the presentation. So I'm just going to be looking at this and then uh, seeing, uh, you know, what you did at the end and kind of using your presentation to grade the last bit. Uh, so should be pretty straightforward. Let's, let's just jump into my, if you guys have any questions as we're going through it, feel free to type it in there. I'm not sure who's in the chat with me today, uh, but if you want to type it in there, I'll try to hit everyone's questions as we kind of go along. And even if there's something off topic you're not sure about, um, you just want to throw out random ideas or things you're not sure about, you can also drop that in there as well. So what I'm going to do is just pick up where we left off the last week. So uh, file, we're going to do set project, and I think I have it on the desktop. Uh, it's probably that guy. Mm, I think, hope it's that guy. We're about to find out. Nope, that is definitely not it. It's the wrong one. Environment look dev. What is going on? Oh, okay, that is it. There we go. So I'm setting my project. We're going to open. And we're going to pick up with part two. And I actually don't remember where I left off with you guys. Because obviously I'm not doing everything in the live sessions, but I am... I do want to see what we did do. Oh, yeah. 
Well, that's actually kind of cool. Okay. I remember this. Okay, let's turn on selection highlighting. There we go. So, yeah, the last time we did a couple things uh, in the week, week three live session, we had done the wall. We got the wall texture in there. We connected that to our, our Pixar surface material under color. We did a couple of specular properties. And I think we got the normal map in there as well. Yep, we did the normal map. Um, so I didn't do the glass. That's right, because last week I decided to do something a little bit off script. And I j basically just talked about all the materials with a little test seam where we had like the little... Um, it'd be like a little polysphere and I think a helix and I was just running through like diffuse and specular properties and metals and diffuse transmissions and glass. Um, so last week we didn't really do much in here. Um, so the bottles aren't finished or anything like that. I might actually run through the bottles real quick. We're going to kind of blitz through that just as a really quick refresher. Um, but pretty much everybody did pretty good at that. So let's just do glass super fast so in the display layers over here we can see we have this little layer for the window glass that's just unhiding in hiding the glass so uh, i'm going to right click on the layer for the glass and we're going to do select objects and you can see if in wireframe mode if you're uh, or if you go to four which is you know these two buttons up here uh, that's just selecting the objects which are the windows uh, on the layer so the reason we're doing that is because we're going to very quickly add a Pixar surface to it. So I'm just right clicking on that icon and picking Pixar surface, which is applying this material to whatever we had selected. Okay, so it's already on there. So if I render it, we'll probably see that it's just going to be a gray. Yep. And how do we build glass? It was very easy, but let's just run through this real quick. How do we do glass? Whether it's the glass over here, the glass bottles, it's all the same thing. Uh, when you click on any of your objects that have the glass on it, if I can click on one, that would be amazing, which apparently, there we, oh, there we go. Took me a bit. When you click on one, you can see it shows up over here. This is Pixar Surface 5, and I want to rename it immediately. So let's call this, uh, let's call it Windows Material. Now it's gray, and it's because, again, glass starts with a gray diffuse color, right? That's like Glass doesn't really have a diffuse color. It's just transparent. There's like a transmission effect, and there's reflections on the surface of the glass. So the actual texture and the color really doesn't exist on glass. So we can just simply slam all that down so we have no diffuse reflection. And then we can go all the way down here to glass, and then we're going to boost up reflection and refraction gain, and immediately we get glass. Now, it's, it's going to take a little bit for it to show up because it's kind of hard to see it. So what I'm going to do is hit the crop button uh, up here at the top of the viewport. So we turn it on. Then I can just marquee select over what I want to render. So it's refining it a little bit quicker. And you can see that it's already kind of working. Um, I can't see much inside because I don't have lighting in there at the moment. But you can see that that looks kind of shiny, and it's reflecting the sky behind the camera. So the, the windows are definitely working. If I had light inside, I think we'd see a little bit more information, but that's totally fine. So we're good. But glass is already set up properly. Now, if we're going to do it a little bit faster here for the bottle. Let's do it again. But this time, all I'm going to do is change the color. So these are the same thing. So if I click, and if I can actually select it, Oh, my selection's all off. There we go. Oh, that was weird. The whole screen was off. There we go. I was wondering why I was kept clicking. It's like what I was selecting and clicking on wasn't actually highlighting. I think the viewport was kind of messed up. There we go. Now I can click on things. All right, so we click on our bottle. And again, let's do a Pixar surface. We right click. There it is. We're going to do bottle material. We'll call this bottle material one because we might have a couple of those. And same thing, boom, boom, slam those down to, to black. Can't see it, right? Come down here, slam up the, oh, let's try that again. There we go, slam up the uh, ref uh, refraction gain, reflection gain. You can see it's already working. It's really uh, clear, so this is like perfect glass. But if I do my little crop and just draw over that, so we're letting it refine in that one area. We can get a little bit better detail uh, much faster. We're going to click. And uh, remember, if you ever see that selection pop up, 
and you're trying to get to the material and see how you can't see the, the render very well when that thing is selected, don't forget up in show, you can always turn off selection highlighting. And now when you click on things, it doesn't show up as a selection. And so I can, it's not gonna be visually distracting in the render. So I can click, come over here. And maybe for this one, since we have like a lot of red and warmer tones, maybe we'll do something a bit more like teal or green on this side. So I'm just gonna go to green, boost up the saturation a little bit. And you can see you don't have to push it very far before it uh, really becomes fairly strong. So even though we're boosting it up, I might pull back the saturation a little bit and maybe even just darken the value just slightly so it's not um, too light and easy to see through. I kind of like that look of getting like the darker, almost like Heineken uh, type shade. Uh, that looks pretty good. And there's some other things we did, you know, last week in the videos where we were talking about um, putting stuff in the bump attribute to get some like waviness on the surface. But I mean, really like what we did here as far as like taking the gain and color down to black and then uh, boosting these guys up real quickly. I mean, that's as easy as it gets for glass. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, now I think we can jump into some of the transmission effects. So let's talk about what we have to do this week. So we're just gonna turn this off for a second. And there are a couple main things you guys are doing. We'll kind of take this step by step. So we want to get the candle flame and the light working. And I have videos that walk through this. Uh, if you go to the dive deeper section, it'll explain this in quite a bit of detail. But we're gonna make the flame, we're gonna make it emissive, and we're gonna try to trick the illumination into working by setting up a new light source to help the flame uh, illuminate things around it. So let's start with that. So we're gonna go to perspective and just so I can navigate and move around inside of here. So if I zoom in, you can see if we get really close, um, there's the flame right there. And let's turn on selection highlighting again so I can see that. Okay, so there it is. You can see in the candle group, so we have two candle groups. There's our candle flame geo for this one. It's the same thing over there. Now what we're gonna do is let's make the material for this side first. And then I think what I'm gonna do is actually build all of the candle stuff over here first, and then we're gonna transfer that over to this one later on the other side. So we're gonna first click on it, and we are gonna do a Pixar surface again. So same starting point. Okay, make our Pixar surface. You can see when you click on it, over here, if we click through the tabs, there it is. And let's call this uh, flame material. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna leave, I'm gonna see if I can render with perspective, because this might be easier. Yeah, I'm actually gonna leave my perspective can or camera right here and just render up close so we can see it in quite a bit of detail. Because obviously, if I use the other camera, like I know that's we're gonna use it for the final, but I can't see anything looking through that one because it's way too far away. So we're gonna do a crop. Let's draw over this one section right here, and I'm gonna turn off selection highlighting again. And let's turn off the crop as well. There we go. So now I can again click on things and I don't see the little green selection thing pop up. All right, so flame material, how do we do this? So this one's kind of interesting because this is gonna be the first material we've made where it is emissive. So emissive is a material that emits light. Everything else we've done is a surface reacting with light. Like the, the doors of the balcony, right? That's a diffuse reflection surface and a specular reflection. It's a, it's a opaque material, you know, light interacts with it. If light doesn't hit it, we don't see it, right? It's black. So most materials in the world have to have light coming from somewhere around it in order for you to see it. This is different for this. What we're actually doing with the candle flame is instead of us making a object that reacts with light, um, we are essentially making the light. Uh, the flame is the light source. So it's kind of a different thing here. Now, because it is different, we wanna really think about how you do that with the material because at the top here under diffuse, remember it always defaults to this gray and does a flame have a diffuse color? Uh, it, it really doesn't, It's because diffuse is again like another object that has light that hits it. So we're gonna take diffuse and just 
bring this down to black just like we did for the glass. We don't need this particular part of the material to do anything. So we're shutting it off. Now what we need to do is start looking through the other areas and think about what would we need to turn on to get this to look right. We're looking for that emissive area. Now it's not labeled very clearly where it's called emissions, but if you come down to this area called glow, this is actually where you do that. So glow is emissions. It's just named differently on the material. It's the same thing. Um, someday they might rename this and call it emissions. I'd prefer that, but for now they're calling it glow. It's the same thing. So we're going to go to gain. We're going to hit one, hit enter. And you can see just by immediately turning on the gain, just cranking it up, immediately it turns solid white. And so what it's doing is once you enable this and turn the gain up, and just think of this like an on and off slider, like an intensity, um, it's allowing the glow color to show up on the surface. So if I darken it, you'll see it just becomes a darker gray. So see how what, what we're seeing in the render matches what we're seeing over here in the attribute editor? It's the same thing. And it doesn't matter if there were multiple lights in the scene, if I deleted all the lights, this will always look the same. I could delete every light in this project and everything else would turn black. This would still be white. So this does not need light to show up. It is a light source. Now what we're going to do is click it. And um, for now, I'm just going to guess what I think the, the flame color should look like. So if we wanted to, we could actually pull up reference. Let's do a search for candle flame. Now candle flames are kind of interesting because there is a there's a gradient to it. Now thankfully at the distance we're at, we don't need to actually see that variation. It's just way too small and far away. So I don't expect you guys to do that. There are ways though to fake something like this to have um, the right candle flame look. Uh, we can put like a ramp on it. And I actually might try that real quick. I'm, I don't know if I UV'd this or not. Actually, I, I think I might do this with you guys just to kind of shake it up a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so for color, what I could do is I obviously could go in there and like just pick some tone like this where it's just like a kind of a bright, almost like a white, yellow, orange. That's fine. Um, there are ways to give it like gradients. So on the connection of color right here on the right where you have that little checker box, if I hit it, when this pops up, normally when we do this, we're just picking file node, like we're just connecting some texture into it, like something we made from Photoshop. Uh, I'm going to change it up, though. We're going to go down to ramp, because I want you guys to see what this does, and hopefully this even works. I wonder, I'm starting to wonder if some of these render man materials do not work well. Oh, there we go. Now we're seeing it. There it is. Hey, what's up, Corey? No worries. Welcome to the party. Uh, what we're doing right now, for anyone that's just kind of showed up in the middle of this, um, we're just talking about a candle flame. And this is an emissive material, which we talked about a little bit last week. But I was actually going to show you guys how to fake some of these gradients you get. We're going to do it like very cheaply, so it's not going to be 100% accurate. But you can see the general tone of it being like blues into like uh, whites and yellow and orange at the tip. We can actually fake that by um, going to the object and we turn diffuse down. We're down here under glow. We close out of this other stuff like glass. And we have gain cranked up. And then on the glow, uh, the color, instead of it just being a white, I hit the little checker button on the side and we loaded in a 2D ramp. So I'll do it on this one just so you can see it again. So checker button, I clicked that guy right there but I did it for this attribute here. So this is a ramp, this is what it looks like. And it's basically a great There we go. Oh, we're back, okay, my laptop freaked out. Um, so what I'm gonna do is you can see at the bottom here, when I move it, see how it's changing, how it gradiates from one to the other. So I'm just working on the position where I'm gonna put this about here, so it feels like it's at the base, and the tip, I need to see, actually that might have been pretty good at the end, pretty close to that. 
and we're going to start putting a couple other points in here. I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the black circle at the top. So see how when I, a ramp's kind of interesting, like you basically click on different points at the top and you can change the color on the ramp. If you click anywhere else, you can add other points and they have their own colors you can pick. But let's do this. We're going to do a What I'm going to do is actually pull, I need to pull this up and put it next to my screen so I can see it. Sorry, give me one second. Let's try to reload it so I can see everything at once. There we go. All right. So that's a little bit too gray. So we're going to go in here and I'm going to click and let's do blue, saturate it definitely more to green. So we're going to shift this way just a little bit. Okay, and now we're going to get somewhere in here. I definitely transitioned into white. So what, what I could probably do is just grab this white and just pull that much farther down. You can see how it's like gradating right there near the base. Let's put the white right about there. And let's come over here. I'll show you a trick to what we could do is if you pick the right type of orange at the tip, like let's do, it's gonna be pretty rich, like over here. Um, if I actually use the same orange and pepper that inside of here, I can actually force it to hit the yellows just by cranking up the value. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say we do, I'm gonna delete the white. We're gonna put this here. We'll do maybe one there, and I'll do one over here for the orange on the tip. So right now it looks terrible, right? Like that is the worst candle flame we've ever done in our lives. And I should not be teaching this class. <laughs> so we've done something very weird, but um, this color will happen naturally if I make the value of this bright enough. So for example, if I click on it for this orange, if I go into here, this is kind of a cool effect. If you go to the value and crank the value up beyond the limit, you'll want, like, just kind of notice what happens to the color. Like, if I do 1.5, see what's already happening? Let's do 2. 4. See what's going on? Right? 6. 8. I'm basically blowing this thing up big time with these crazy high values and you can see where it's forcing it to make the gradients where it's a, a hotter more intense color of the orange and it's naturally pushing in to those other tones on its own now it is a pretty harsh transition where it goes into the other ones so probably what i could do for the other guys is um, also bring these up a little bit where i maybe do like uh, five well maybe not that much i'm just going to try to give it a little bit more intensity for the ones around it. And this guy might actually do three. And you can see we have this really interesting effect here where I'm sort of faking the value and the gradients on this ramp just by toning the different points. It's making the colors go up to the tip. And uh, from a distance, this will definitely look pretty good. It, I know it's up close. You can tell it's not like as good as the real thing. I, main thing I'm missing is right at this center point where it emits. I need to get that little arc. There are ways to do it where I can chain like a ramp into a ramp, but that is like way too deep for what we're doing this week. This already is beyond what you guys need to do. But up close, this does look pretty cool when you see it like that. So this will all be in the recording. So if you guys want to try playing around with this thing for your project, like I think it'd be really fun to, to see that. So we got our little flame, whether or not you do the, the gradient or if you just simply pick a nice bright color, that's totally fine too. So we have our mission working. Now what I'm gonna do is just kill the render for a second. Let's very quickly get the uh, the wick figured out. This one's super easy. So we're just gonna right click and Pixar surface. Uh, it's on that little wick piece right there, like the stem. And we'll call this wick material. Uh, this I'm not gonna put much thought into it. Uh, it's gonna be very dark. And we'll give it a little bit of a very subtle kind of reflection, maybe 0.5, but 
there's not much to this guy. I'm not even really too concerned with what it looks like. As long as it's like a darkish gray color or black, I'm happy with it. Uh, let's very quickly get the light set up for this thing, though. So um, I'm kind of liking the emissive effect. I got my little wick set up. I want to get this to illuminate things around it. Now, you can kind of see where it's trying to. All right, so we have all these little tiny speckled dots everywhere. So what is happening? So what you're seeing is, because remember, light with render man wants to bounce around natively. Like it, light is always going to be bouncing around the scene. And you're seeing that when it's sampling this, um, the, the arch back here, this part of the balcony archway, that all these little samples are randomly hitting this little flame. And so some of the samples are triggering these bounced light values that are very, very bright from the ramp that we picked and we created. So uh, it's, it's kind of doing an okay job, but you can kind of see that there's also an issue that even if we visually get this the way that we like it, it doesn't mean that it's going to illuminate stuff around it the way that we want, because this isn't really a light source. We're sort of faking it to look like a light source just by like doing a bunch of clever tricks with the material, and we also went pretty far with the ramp. That's not really an actual light like we have before, you know, like we've done before with these guys. So that's where we're going to push this just a little bit farther. So the render. What I'm going to do is click on this and hit F just so I can kind of fix my camera's focus on that thing. And we're going to go over here and right click on our light button. And we're going to make a Pixar sphere light. And I don't remember, did you guys use this one at all? Like this month or last month? I don't know if you guys used the Pixar uh, sphere light when you were doing any of the projects back in the first shooting and lighting class. Or not last month, sorry, two months ago for you. We don't have many people that use this one. A lot of you probably were doing like the Pixar uh, disc light or maybe like the rectangular light. But I don't know if uh, many people were using this one. I talked about it a little bit, but it's not really used too frequently in that class. But it's sort of has the same shape as like the Pixar dome light. Um, this one, though, is omnidirectional, where it wants to emit out in all directions. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what most people did. Is it wasn't really, like, forced for you guys to use it, but I know a couple people probably did find this on their own and just play around with it. Now, the trick to this thing is what I'm trying to do is rotate it and scale it and center it, because I want it to just barely hug around the shape of the candle. So we're also going to scale it in this way. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but I'm just trying to get a pretty good shape that's kind of accurate to what we're getting there with the candle flame. I might just tilt that even a little bit this way. But it's the key of this is it's around the object. Um, you don't want to have it small where it's intersecting because what's going to happen is if you actually have it too small where it's partially inside of this thing. Uh, remember too that this is still a piece of geometry. It will block light. Just like when you have a light inside and if the, you have the doors closed, it can't get out. It, that's the same thing that's going to happen here. If this is too small and part of it's in the candle geometry, uh, that candle object is going to act like a blocker and it will prevent the light from escaping and illuminating things around it. So just something to keep in mind. All right, let's open up the attribute editor again. We're going to turn on R, and then what I'm going to do is do our crop. Uh, actually, I'm going to back up a little bit on this one so I get a better view of what's going to happen here. I'm just going to draw a little crop around the whole part there, and I got the light selected. Uh, we could call this maybe flame one, I guess. All right, let's do temperature. This is a good example for using color temperature because we can look up what fire is. Fire is right around the 2,000-ish area, 2,500. Let's try see how warm that looks. Now, I've got the temperature enabled, and I'm picking 2,000 Kelvin. I don't see it because I haven't boosted up the exposure, uh, but it probably, yeah, you can tell it does work. Even jumping to, to 5 is doing something. Now, how far you want to push it? I'm going to kind of let you guys figure that out. It's hard to say because it, it depends so much of what the other light is around your scene. 
if it's a really dark shot, then you might crank it up a bit more because you're sort of setting it up for like those night render, those night images where like your your fire is very very bright because your eyes have adjusted to like a lower uh, intensity. But if it's during the day, you might want to keep this pretty faint because you don't really see the illumination from a candle very much during the daytime. It's all just based on how our pupils dilate and how cameras capture light with the uh, um, the shutter speed and all sorts of other things. So I'm going to boost it up a little bit more. Uh, not, well, that's a little bit much. I might leave it, though, to see what that looks like. Let's go up on temperature just a tiny bit, because I felt like it was a little bit too, uh, like, rich orange. I'm going to kind of shift it back into more of, like, a yellow orange, like that. That, to me, feels a little closer to the tones that we were getting uh, with the candle flame. And you can see it's illuminating on the inside. It's casting out around it. And maybe what we'll do is a very quick spot check from our render cam and just see what that looks like from back here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think that's probably appropriate for a little like candle sitting there on the balcony. Like, yeah, I think that's kind of where I'd want it. I don't need to push it much beyond that. It's not too bad. So from a distance, I think that does hold up pretty well. Let's go back to perspective. All right, I'm liking that so far. All right, next up, let's do the candle wax, okay? So uh, currently what I'm doing is I'll just turn on selection highlighting again so you can see it. I'm just clicking on the candle wax. This candle was uh, modeled by Paul Weisman, your digital painting uh, one instructor. It's incredible. So we got our little candle wax piece and we are gonna click on it and then right click on Pixar Surface Got our new material on there, and let's call this candle wax material. We're going to turn on our render. Now, I'm basically doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, we're going to hit the crop and draw over that guy. Oh, one thing, too, uh, since we did get started a little late, uh, I'm actually going to probably go a little bit, uh, a little bit, bit beyond nine o'clock uh, for the live session. So we might be closer to like nine fifteen, nine twenty by the time uh, we're done with this thing. So I've got the candle wax on there. Now the key with candle wax is I want to make sure that we get diffuse transmissions. So diffuse transmissions is something we did last week where I want light to scatter inside of the candle. Um, so you can do a search for this. If I do candle wax. I don't want to find one that has, yeah, I'm looking to get something sort of like this where you get that light that's trying to trace through the interior of the wax because it's kind of translucent. We're looking for that effect to happen right here. Right now, it's not, right? The light's getting stuck inside. It doesn't know, or it's getting stuck behind it in this little crevice. It's not really going into the surface, and that's what we're trying to get. So we're going to kill diffuse reflection completely. And I'm going to come down to the area called um, subsurface. So this is where we're going to do all this fun stuff. So there's a bunch of different models. And um, like what we did last time, I'm going to do exponential path trace. And non-exponential is still really good. I like both of these guys. Uh, you can play around with either. They're very, very similar. Um, it's totally up to you and which one you want to pick. We'll stick with exponential. And let me just turn that on and off again. Because sometimes when I do a swap over to subsurface, scattering it doesn't really calculate properly until i reset the render let's go back okay so it's set up okay i'm going to go to gain let me actually turn off selection highlighting again gain we're going to do one and you can see even before i've done any fine tuning it immediately works right we're already getting the effect of it so this is very very similar to what we saw over here because you can see light is at the top going in. It's trying to bounce around inside. We got that little gradient right there. Now it's working. Um, it actually looks kind of cool. Even down here, it has that sort of fleshy look at the bottom. So it, it's, it's definitely doing what I need it to do. The problem is that it's just way too bright. It's, it's a super intense white, and it's really just allowing that light to pass through this thing way too easily. So that is an issue with the color. 
or something that we can kind of finesse a little bit with the mean free path distance. Now, what I'm going to try to do is keep this relatively simple for you guys, and we're not going to worry about any of these other path distances, directionality, diffuse blend, none of that. We can still get this to look good simply by changing the color and maybe the mean free path color. So we'll start with color. We're going to go here, and I'm kind of feeling... Let's do something like a plum color. That might be kind of fun. So we're going to go over here into like a bluish tone. We're going to boost this up with saturation. And we're going to darken that down a little bit. There we go. So I'm just picking the tone I want for the candle wax. And you can see that uh, it's working, right? It's getting a little darker, but there's still a lot of light passing through this thing. So down here, we have this, um, the bean free path color. Okay, and this is something that typically you don't have to change too much when you're doing things like skin. This is actually set to a pretty good value right now. But what's happening is it's warming up the interior of this a little bit too much. So what you can try doing is I'll start shifting this towards that purple a little bit. Now it's kind of complicated because to do this properly, each material allows certain color uh, color frequencies or light frequencies to pass through differently. And there probably is a, a specific color for wax I could pick that would allow like the right types of like red light to pass through or, or green and blue. But we're just going to kind of trick this a little bit. I want to see if I go to purple what that looks like. It actually is not too bad. I think I'm going to pull back. Let me actually undo that. I'm gonna go, come on, undo. There we go. I'm going to actually try doing this uh, mean free path distance. And I want to see if I pull that back. It's actually kind of working OK. Yeah, we're going to stick with this one. I think if I keep going, it's tough because that light is right there. And it's just blowing that thing out. This could be a potentially a time where we could try non-exponential. Um, non-exponential um, has this bleed control, which is kind of interesting. And it's you can tell when I go between these, it keeps the same settings. All it's doing is adding bleed. It's a way for me to bleed the like the uh, diffuse transmissions down into this area. So really all we're doing is like literally experimenting and just seeing what we can kind of come up with here. I think what I'm going to do is actually like instead of going to that same purple, I'm going to do more of like a pink, I think, for this one and just pull that back a little bit. That actually feels pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. It is pretty bright right here, but I think from a distance, this is still going to kind of read okay. But uh, what I really like is because I'm choosing a slightly warmer tone, I think the transition of seeing that really bright light here, and I know that's very intense still, but seeing the bright light here, hit that, and then create that gradient where it's going from like the white blown out intensity to like the pink berry down into purple. This actually feels like really nice to me. So I'm kind of digging that. Now, the only thing I'm missing at this point is I need to get the reflections on the outside of the surface. And a nice thing, by the way, because we're doing it like this, is remember, everything we're doing here, we're just du duplicating and moving to the other side, like or applying to the other side. So we're not really going to be redoing much work. You do it on one side, you're just putting those same materials on the other side of the balcony. Um, so up here, under primary spec, we're going to do the same thing we did for a few pieces where we go to face color, boost it up, bring up the edge color a little bit. Might make that a little more reflective. But you'll kind of notice that we're getting some shiny bits here on the wax. And I'm just going to let that refine for just a little bit because the grain is pretty intense. Yeah, you can see it right down there. Yeah, it's definitely reflecting. Um, even on like kind of the, some of the bits on the outside here, it's reflecting a lot of the sky uh, behind the camera. But I kind of like that. Looking pretty good. So let's just try to assign that to the, to the other side real fast. And I, there is one thing I have to do. I need to move the light over. So that I do have to duplicate. So we're going to click on the light. And I'm going to do Control-D. So we have our duplicate, W. 
we're going to translate that over and just slide that way over here. All right, let's go up. And we're just going to try to get that pretty close. That should work. All right, so we have our other one there. Now to assign the materials, this is very easy. We're going to click. Uh, let me show you the selection so you can see that. Sorry. Um, it's a good thing I did that, by the way, because I just realized if I hadn't looked at that, I had this selected too, and I didn't even realize it. So we're going to click, go in the hypershade, and let's find our materials. All right, so we made the candle wax. So that's selected. Right mouse button over candle wax. Assign that material to it. So now that same material we did over there is also on this one. Uh, we're going to do the wick. Uh, what did I... Did I like... Am I looking right at it? Oh, wick. Wow. Okay. Wick. And there's our flame. Sweet. So I think... This will probably already be done. Yep. That's it. It's working. So let's pull back the camera. All that work. <laughs> Look how small this is in the frame for the final. So we probably put, honestly, too much time into that by zooming in close to look at it. That's all right, though. Um, let's just do a little crop over that. So you can see, like, it does kind of pay off, though, because now from a distance, like, those actually look, you know, I think pretty convincing. Like, they, they feel okay. You can see the little, like, scattering effect happening. You've got some nice little subtle illumination around it. You know, maybe since the candle wax is pretty bright, you know, we could try pushing the light color a little bit farther, make that brighter. But um, I'll let you guys play around with that. Not too shabby. So there's our... Um, candle wax, a mission, and candle wax, or uh, the candle wick. So that's all done. All right, so we've done this guy. Uh, we did the candle wax. I did a different color here in the screenshot, um, but you guys can pick whatever you want. But don't forget about the primary spec. That's a big one. I've had a lot of people missing that. So we have primary spec and the vase. So the vase, um, this is one that's going to be kind of similar to the ca candle wax, where uh, it's still transmissions, diffuse transmissions, but we need to find a texture for it. So I'm probably going to do, I might do something like a jade, I think, or like a marble. I think either of those would probably work pretty well. Um, in mine, I actually went a little farther, and I started like adding like textures to it in Photoshop. So... Uh, well, you know, like, remember how back when you guys did, like, the pedestal, you were bringing in the UV map, and you were, like, lining textures up with it? I sort of did that for this one, where I decided to push it a little farther than what I really needed to, and I started, I found, like, these cool, like, floral patterns from, like, wallpapers, and I started lining them up over the UVs. I tried to design, like, more of, like, an ornate painted pattern on top of the surface, just to play around with some new ideas, just so it wasn't too basic. I'm uh, not going to have time to do that with you guys, but I think we will do some basic transmissions, and then I might show you how to do some gold accents on some of the pieces, um, so it's not just one material the whole way through. So let's run through that super quick. All right, let's go to full screen, and we'll kill the crop. Oops, we actually clicked to get rid of that, and we'll kill the render. Okay, let's move on to this guy. Okay, so let's check out the UVs, because I think, yeah, so this these are the UVs. If you guys feel that you want to, like, do a UV snapshot, just follow the same stuff you did through with the pedestal. You can do the, the snapshot, you can export it out, you can line up images in Photoshop, just like you did before. Totally up to you. Um, I think what I actually might try doing is I'm going to see if I can get something kind of interesting working with Maya's 3D procedurals. I don't know if this is going to look good. I have a bad feeling about this, but we're going to try it out. 
I, I kind of just want to do some different things with you guys because I've been doing the same lectures for a while, and it might be kind of fun to break up uh, from the norm, just like I did with the candle flame with the little ramp. Uh, let's give it a shot. All right. What I'm going to do is for a – as a test, sometimes when I'm doing new materials, if I want to see textures, I'll actually construct stuff in the glow area so I can see it, and then I'll move it to another part of the material. And I'll show you why. So let's click on this, and we're going to do Pixar Surface. And I'm going to do uh, Face Material. Okay, and we're going to kill Diffuse Gain, uh, just like we did before. This is still going to be kind of like Candle Wax. It's going to be a translucent stone, very thin. Uh, hence, like what we were saying, Marble and Jade. But we're going to come down here to Glow. And I'm going to boost the gain up, and I'm going to show you what this is going to look like. It's going to look really weird, but just bear with me here. There's a method to the mad madness. I'm just not making it white because this is what it's going to look like. So right now, it looks very weird and flat, obviously. But the reason I'm doing that is because I, it, by using glow color, it's a really good way to visualize a texture or something that you're trying to create, like a pattern. Because if I put it into diffuse color or another one, just based on like the lighting condition, sometimes you'll have a really hard time like actually seeing what the thing is you're making. And so I can trick it with this attribute down here as a temporary thing, build the texture with some of these Maya procedurals, very similar to the glass stuff that we did last week in the videos. And then once I know that the texture looks kind of good, think of this kind of like you making a texture in Photoshop. Once I, th once I think the texture looks pretty good, then I'm going to disconnect it from the glow, and I'm just going to connect it to wherever I need to use it on the material, which will probably be under subsurface. So what we're going to do is – actually, let me save it first. That would be a huge step in the right direction. I could totally see this crashing. Okay. So we're going to click. I'm going to go back to the material on glow color. We're going to hit the little connection box. And I am going to make, I'm going to try something actually kind of adventurous here. I'm going to go into Hypershade, and I want to show you guys a layered texture. Let's actually close out of that. We're going to get crazy here. We're going to click on Vase, right mouse button, Graph Network. So this is the material in the node graph. There's really nothing going into it right now. It's very, very boring. But over here, I'm going to use Tab. And we're going to type in layered texture. Oh, actually, I haven't used the Pixar layered texture yet. Let me see what this one looks like. Uh, no, no, we're not going to worry about that. We'll do the old Maya one. Layered texture. Okay. This thing is kind of dopey, but I've used it for many years, so I'm, uh, at least I'm comfortable with it. So the, uh, here's the Maya layered texture node. I'm just ho hitting tab, typing it in. We're making it. It's not connected to anything yet. It's just hanging out. But I'm going to take the out color, and we're going to go into the glow color. So it is here. Um, what you can do is you can either middle mouse drag this onto the word color in the attribute editor. That connects it. Let me undo it. Or if you like using these little white dots on the nodes, if you click on a white dot, you can pick the input and output values through here. So it's a little trickier to do it this way, but if I do click, out color, out color, go to the white up here, and then click, it is, oh, geez, I gotta find it, glow color right there. Click. And that does the same thing as me middle mouse dragging onto the attribute editor over here. So right now the glow color is probably going to look green, uh, but there's a reason why we're doing this because we are going to put these different textures together in here. So currently the, the layered texture is just a single color. Over here I'm going to hit tab. Actually, let me just right click and go to create node. And I'm going to go to Maya's 3D Textures, and we're going to pick, let's do Marble. So here's Marble. You can't really see much with it right now, but uh, we are going to 
connect this guy into the green color right here in the layered texture. So I'm going to click on the layered texture, so just so you can see the properties for it, and I'm going to middle mouse drag from this node over on top of that color and the color slider, this area right here, and release, and it's now connected. So the first or the only layer in here at the moment is pulling from marble. So I want you to see what this looks like. That is the marble. So um, the reason, again, I'm putting it on the glow is because it's a really easy way for me to see the texture um, before I connect it into the right part of the material. And what I'm kind of noticing is that with this one, if I go back to marble, I can start messing with the settings and it should update. So like, let's make the vein width a little bigger. We'll get some chunky veins. Let me see what diffusion does. Diffusion's like a cloudy effect outside of it. We got contrast. I might bring contrast down. I have some noise parameters down here. I'm just really playing around and just seeing what this thing can do. Amplitude kind of smooths it out. Uh, let me see what depth does. I think if I go smaller, it does do something. Or not. I'm literally just clicking around and just putting in numbers and I'm just trying to see what it's doing. Okay, that is going to like a scale parameter almost. That's interesting. Yeah, I think I'm kind of okay with that. What I might do though is just change. Um, whoops. I think I'm going to change some of the uh, the colors in here. So let's do a different type of marble. We're going to do something like, uh, let me help if I have some reference for this actually. Okay, so a lot of whites. And these are pretty cracked too, so I might make my vein width a little thinner. All right, so let's do vein width. We're going to go down like that. And I think for this one, instead of it being pure red, I might shift into more of like a rosy color and just desaturate it and just see if we can get away with something like that. I think that might work. Now, the reason I'm also doing a layered texture is because this is sort of like layering stuff in Photoshop where you can also get away with putting another texture on top of it. And I just wanted to see if that was going to look good. So I'm going to leave this one here, and I'm going to try clicking again in the layered texture. And it's making a new layer, and I'm going to middle mouse drag this layer to the left so it sits on top of this one. So the way this kind of reads is sort of like Photoshop, but instead of Photoshop reading like top down, where the top layer layers over the ones below it going down like vertically, this reads left to right. So this is the top layer. As you go to the right, regardless of how many of these you have, this is going down through the layers, that's the background. But it still essentially is just like Photoshop. Um, so for this one, we're gonna do an overblend mode. Let's do uh, another 3D procedural. Let's uh, see what else we got. And this, honestly, this could look absolutely terrible. I really have no idea. We're just having fun. So let's do, I don't know. We'll do solid fractal. Just to break it up a little bit. Uh, so solid fractal, we're going to put that up there. Layer texture. And I'm just going to middle mouse drag this over the other green color. Okay, there it is. You can already see it showing up. There's solid fractal. It's covering it. Um, but I do have an alpha where I can pull that back. And you can kind of see, depending on what you do with that layer, is like opacity. If you start playing with the blend modes. See how it's like this extra layer that it's mixing together with the other one? And this is sort of where you get into your like your blend modes in Photoshop where you just like trial and error your way through it until you find one that kind of looks cool. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what type of stone that is. Some weird space rock, but I kind of don't hate it. <laughs> I actually might leave that. Uh, I think we're going to leave that. I have no clue what we just made. This is this is exactly what I'm talking about. This was not planned. I don't know what the hell this thing even is. It looks like some weird alien infection in the rock, but I like it. Yeah, we're totally doing that. We have now taken the marble and we infected it with some 
extraterrestrial bacteria, and we're going to keep moving forward. That was a very happy mistake. I'm not going to change anything. I don't know what we did, but we're, we're sticking with it. All right, so we have our, uh, our color. Let's get rid of marble, and let's bring that back. All right, we're going to kill the render. So I've made a texture inside of Maya with 3D procedurals. This is not, has no Photoshop, none of that. And what we're going to do is now that we've seen it with the glow, because we've made it very easy to see that, I'm going to drag over the connection and backspace and break it so it's not going to the material. So see how the glow is defaulting to white now because this isn't going into it? Let's just like kill all this and get out of glow. We're going to go back up to subsurface. We're going to go back to... Um, do exponential or non-exponential again. And we're going to connect this into the color right there. So we're going to middle mouse drag this over to color. I might use it in mean free path color too. I'm going to see what we can get away with with just this. But I may have to do another uh, connection here to this guy. All right. And we're going to bring that gain up. And I have no idea what we're going to get. I don't know if the lights around it are strong enough for it to really look translucent. Oh, actually, yeah, that actually kind of works. It's, yeah, it's working. It's definitely translucent. It's kind of interesting, too, because this one is so, the, the default settings with this thing, it's so translucent and thin. It's it's almost looks like it has, like, a very weird, like, um, uh, frosted glass kind of look to it. You can see where all that, I have that bright light above the balcony that's cutting down, and you can see where it's slicing right through the geometry. Like look at all the tips right here on those little curved pieces. All those are picking up some really interesting, like, um, diffuse transmission effects right now. This actually, to me, looks better than what we were getting with the candle wax. So it's kind of interesting. Um, and we're going to come down here. And I'm just going to try to lower the gain down just a little bit because that thing is really, really allowing a lot of light to pass through it. Let's pull that back just a little bit. It definitely looks cool, though. It, yeah, it, you're totally right. It does kind of look like that. Yeah, I'm not hating it. And if we want to do, we could still add reflections to the outside because right now it, it's only doing diffuse transmissions, which again is your subsurface scatter. I could totally come up here and then like, all right, well, I want it to be shiny still, right? It's a polished stone. So maybe the stone has that same thing we've done before. You can see we're starting to get some highlights on there. And what I might do is a layered one where how about we do a drier highlight for the stone, whatever this material is this <laughs> space rock and then I'm going to come down to clear coat and I could totally add another highlight that was a lower roughness so there's like a, a gloss on top of a drier reflection uh, underneath it and you can get kind of creative with this too because if this is some weird space rock thing that like we're not really trying to match any reference we could totally go down there to like iridescence and play around with iridescent reflections uh, I'll even show you that real quick that's kind of interesting. Let's kill all these guys. So we're taking away reflections. If I went down to iridescence, if I turn these on, you'll see we get a different type of reflection effect. So this is now acting like it has almost like an oil s surface on the outside where the reflections have a tint where they're transitioning between these two colors based on the angle that you're looking at the surface. It's very similar to like a soap bubble um, you know, when you see oil and water mix, like in a puddle, you're going to get those like rainbow um, striations where like the, the light kind of bends and refracts between the different surface levels. Um, that's kind of what we're doing here. I don't, again, I don't know what we're making, but uh, I like it. And I just want to test it out. I do also want to just see what this looks like if I take this layered texture and put it in the mean free path color. So I'm just putting it in both of them. So it's a little bit more vibrant doing it that way. So it's interesting. And we're not done. I'm going to do one more thing here to really tie it all together. I think we're going to do some like green metal accents, like, a, like an actual metallic coating on some of the pieces for this thing. 
It's kind of cool, actually. Just some of my finest work. Um, let's remember the preset browser, our little favorite here from week one. Let's actually use that real quick. So I'm going to jump over here. We're going to go to metal plane. Actually, it'd be metallic paint. Sorry. Something kind of like this would be interesting. And I'll show you like a trick we can do. It, we did this back in week two when we were trying to put the red paint on some of the balcony posts. Because remember, with this piece, you can assign materials to individual sections of this if it's been UV'd properly. So what I'm kind of thinking is I want to get it. Let me go to UV shell. I want to see how this is broken up. Is it top, middle? I might do... Hmm. I might do the base. And I kind of want to do like a few strips here in the middle. All right, let's, I'm going to do this in, old, in pieces here because this might be kind of tricky to do in one shot. So I'm going to do this piece right here in the bottom. And then I'm going to right click on that metallic paint thing. We're going to do import and it's assigned to selected. So that's probably already on there. Now, it's already in the scene, so from here I'm going to spend a little bit more time and try to get some of these other pieces, because I want to do something right here. i got to find that. So that is this piece. It's one of these strips right here in the middle. I think it's... Oh, that's it right there. Yep. Okay, there's one of them. So I'm just... What I'm doing, by the way, is I'm going to right-click in the UV editor and go into Face. And I'm just marquee dragging through right there. And I'm just selecting it and looking at what I'm highlighting. That's kind of what I wanted. And then in the hyper shade, there's the green metallic right there. I'm just going to right click, assign material to selection. And I wanted to do maybe this lip on the top, which I think is one of these guys. I think it's that. Yeah, it's that right. I just over selected it, but this is definitely the right area. I think. Oh, actually, I had it the first time. Yeah, that should look good. So we're going to do that, and then the same thing right mouse button, green metallic paint, assign material to selection, and I think we should see those green metal accents on a few pieces. Yep, that worked. I don't know if it looks good, <laughs> but, but it's something. So we're kind of getting this like interesting mix now where we have whatever the hell this layered marble space rock was with iridescent reflections on the outside that's apparently very translucent. Excuse me. And then we're also putting like green metals like that's coated over certain sections. No idea what this is, uh, but this is something you guys can kind of play around with and just have fun and see what you can do. And obviously, like once you do that, um, it be this is kind of a pain to like recreate that over here because I can't really just copy the materials because I have to go in the U UV editor and literally reselect the UV shells to assign that metal to it properly. So I, I actually might cheat this one, and we're totally just going to delete that vase. Take this one, control D, and then move that over to the other side and call the day. So let's see what we've done here. Here's our masterpiece. We're going to take a step back. I like how all that worked, by the way, and like half the vase is already being cut off out of the frame. What's up, kitty? All right. Kind of cool. Yeah. It's definitely one of the more unique things I've done. <laughs> I don't know if it looks good, but it's something. So anyway, um, we've already kind of pushed this thing like way beyond what we needed to, and I'm kind of running out of time now at this point. But I just want you guys to play around with it, go back, refine stuff based on the previous critiques, um, you know, adjust the lighting, produce a final render, uh, you know, and then... That's really the only thing we didn't do. Like the last step in here was just make your final texture material adjustments. And what I'm kind of recommending 
and some of you may have already done this, is I think what's, what would really help you guys is if you can find a really good reference image like with a color palette that you like. Because I think it's really easy when you do each material separately, you don't really think about the full cohesive piece until you see it all together at the end. And then you might start realizing that there's too much variation. It's, you know, it's feeling very um, rainbowy or clowny where there's just too many different colors all fighting with each other. So it might be a good idea to find a particular artist, uh, a painter, a photographer, some, or even like just um, good photos of interior design, landscape, something that you can pull some inspiration from, find a good palette, and then when you have something you like, you might be able to go back into your scene and start like finessing things a little bit to end up with a final result that you like just a little bit more. So that's, and aside from that, it's just you showing it all off, doing your presentation, posting it on the forum, and you're good to go. So that's it, guys. It's a masterpiece. Uh, definitely digging it. So <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me while we created uh, whatever that was. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, let me know. I'll post the link to you guys for the recording uh, tomorrow morning when I get back at the office. And if I don't get a chance to talk to you guys before um, you turn in your final, um, it's been great working with you guys through Shading and Lighting 1 and Shading and Lighting 2. You can always reach out to me on Discord if you ever want to critique, you have questions about stuff. I'm always around, and uh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you guys later anyway. You might have me in another class down the road uh, once you get farther into the program. But hope everybody has a good night, and I will talk to you all later.